Well, welcome back for another session with me. Today is going to be a very interesting chapter. We're going to talk about tulips, Isaac Newton, and housings. What do they have in common? So, what do they have in common? What's this? This is a beautiful flower, but it's not rose, it's tulips. And who is this? This is Isaac Newton. Now, if you cannot recognize him, me too. And I'm a mechanical engineer. <coughs> and I can't recognize him. And what is this? Housing. So, what I'm about to share with you is some real life story that this story is a highly likely to blow your mind. You better keep your head. And the financial world will start to make sense to you. This is one very important chapter for you to understand how money works in the new world. Interesting, right? So, are you ready? Once upon a time, in a far, far away place, Old Holland lives a community of rich and happy citizens. They are some of the most kind and rational people in the world. Then one day comes a botany professor. All stories go like this, right? That will screw them up. <laughs> With a strange plant from Turkey. These plants, when they are the seed, they look like onion. But in fact, they are tulip. They are, they are flowers, very beautiful flowers when they mature. Okay? So the Dutch love the plant, but the professor wants to sell the tulip bulbs, the thing that will grow into the plant, to them at a high price. So one day, a thief broke in and stole the tulip bulb and resold them at a lower price, but still a high price because they're beautiful flowers, right? Soon, this plant became a popular plant in Dutch garden. An expensive one. Everybody have them. It's like iPhone. It's popular. Everybody have them, but they are still expensive. Something like that. But one day, uh, nice story, right? Some of these plants started to be infected by a certain kind of virus. To be exact, they are called TBV, tulip breaking virus. And this is a bizarre virus. Why? Because before, the tulip bulbs look beautiful like this. But after they get the virus, they look even more beautiful. Exotic, right? This is a kind of virus that makes you more beautiful. Everybody wants to have that virus. So, interestingly, they became more desirable. Once they have virus, everybody wants them. The weirder they are, the more precious they became. And hence, began the tulip mania. Tulips suddenly became like a fashion or the trend among the rich. They are like collectibles now, like antique cars, those things, like fashion, you know? And bulb merchants, bulb merchants, suddenly you have bulb merchants, you know, people that specializes on selling this thing, will try to predict what kind of tulips will be the most desirable next year. So it's like stock market, people try to predict what sector will be the most desirable next year. And we we'll stock up on them. They will keep a lot of these tulip bulbs anticipating a price hike when customers' taste change to this one. Just like the stock market, speculators from one place run to another, much like this. So, this drove up the tulip bulb prices wildly. They went up so fast, okay? Words started to spread about this phenomenon. The higher the prices go, the more people view them as investments. Yeah, is it money? I buy this, suddenly I'm rich, right? Why not? It's a good investment. Hmm. Before long, everyone is interested in buying these tulip bulbs to earn money by selling them at a higher price. Since now, there are more demand, the prices went up. More demand? Okay, economic 101. Okay, why prices go up? Why stock prices go up? Oh, it's all about supply demand. When there are more demand than supply, prices go up. When there are more demand than supply, prices go up. When there are more supply than demand, prices come down. You might want to write it down as your most important note for this chapter. Before long, almost everyone is speculating on tulip bulbs. Yeah, everybody's speculating on tulip bulbs. Nobles, farmers, mechanics, seamen, footmen, servants drop their job to speculate on tulip bulbs. Like the stock market in 1997, I'm like still a children back then, but Back then, everybody is getting rich from a sh uh, share market. You know, auntie that sweep the floor, taxi man, doctors, anyone. 
the everybody is a pro in share market and everybody like drop their job because it's so easy to make money right to speculate on these tulip bulbs in this case we're tulip bulbs this is like the first thing like and this is real life story you know i'm not like making this story up you can google this story this is a real history so anyone who said prices couldn't go up higher will laugh at yeah we are all making money and you this fella say the prices cannot go up look prices go up and making money and you're not making money you're like chicken little you know they were even more embrace embarrassed sorry they're even more embarrassed when prices continue to climb so it's like you tell people don't buy they buy they make money you got no face right and your friends and relatives make enormous profits then suddenly somebody have this bright idea hey this is easy money let's get rich quicker by trading our personal belongings to buy bumps what does this mean well you want to buy bumps you need cash right let's get quicker let's get richer quicker right sell everything we have and let's fully invest in this bump hmm dumbest decision ever so they sell the land they sell the jewels and sell, even sell the furniture okay and why stop there right many of them went on to borrow money to invest in these bobs borrow from those people that don't want to participate like tulip madness this is a very beautiful photo i'm showing you this thing this flower here looks really unique like anybody watch uh, you guys watch anime or not bleach give me a few this is a bleach so this flower is called semper augustus just for the record thus the price of tulip bulbs skyrocketed so everybody chased right so many demand the tulips are just like this right so prices go up very fast and skyrocketed uh, skyrocketed everybody make money at its peak the most expensive tulip bulb the most precious one uh, semper augustus was sold at a price equivalent to 12 acres of land if you know the the um prices of land is like expensive right this is 12 acres of land for one flower so of course with every craziness like this you know story you have climax we just finished a climax now it's the aftermath right the end of madness okay before long when prices were went too high okay unsustainable people got no money to buy anymore no money to chase the price higher so somebody decided to be more careful and started selling always do you have like some intelligent investor at the end so at, on the right side you can see the graph the prices jump from you, you look at the graph it's nine nine eight is one six three four the years the prices went up so fast within few years and then dropped sharply prices began to fall this causes because whenever price start to fall because people borrow money right and they sell all their belonging they have they put a lot of risk there so they they are of course more careful so this causes fear and panic of course i cannot afford to lose so this panic in turn caused the price to fall further everybody sell at once right no, who's to buy so the price go down everybody desperate to sell prices fall even faster this cycle of depreciation works like a snowball running downhill and in no time the tulip bulbs became worthless. The first market crash in the history of the new world. This is the first market crash. You just learned the uh, story of the first market crash and it's called the tulip mania. Also known as the first bubble in the world. So bubble is something like everybody chase something that is not it's like something that is unsustainable and everybody chase that's a bubble. And bubble always pop and this is the popping of the bubble okay so you have learned a very interesting story right so how does this relate to us housing isaac newton and the internet well we're not going to talk about internet but it's the same story internet is another bubble but it's on 2000 uh year 2000 okay where any company with a dot com name everybody buy the stock so back then 2000 year 2000 internet just started right so everybody think internet is like a very um, get rich quick thing you have internet you know how to make website you're a millionaire but we all know that's not true right so that's also one bubble but i'm going to tell you more interesting stories and those stories are not so recent so are you ready for more stories sir isaac newton and the south sea bubble 
So this story took place about 300 years ago in a powerful and wealthy empire, United Kingdom, UK. Everybody like to go UK nowadays, right, to study. They were the big brother in the world. Even now, not so now. Now it's like US and China, right? For the British, the 18th century was a time of prosperity. A large section of the population had money to invest and were looking for places to shove their money. East India Company. Back then, now everybody can own stock. Everybody can buy and sell stock. It's a privilege to everyone. But back then, it's a privileged thing for the privileged people, uh, the high class people. Only 499 people were able to benefit from buying this East India Company. What is East India? Well, East India is a very famous company. You might have heard of this company. This company came to Penang and colonized it. Okay? Sharikat Hindia Timo. Alright, so when there's a demand, because everybody like look at this Sharikat Hindia Timor is like successful, right? Make a lot of money. So the shareholder make a lot of money. Naturally, everybody know, but they cannot own the share. So when there's demand, there's supply. Everybody wants to own share. Well, we give you share like, if you want to own. So the you know capitalism, you want thing automatically pop up. This thing called South Sea Company. So you want to invest? Okay, invest. But if you want to make okay, here's a secret la. Here's a secret to um share market. If you want oh, it's not like a secret to share market really, but because you can't do anything about it, but usually stocks with a story behind it. Stocks with a story because I was I also teach you the Safram investment process. Stocks with a story that everybody know naturally have a higher price people tend to want them more like this co company they have a story they took on government IOU worth of 10 million pounds to reduce the government debt in return for right um, trade monopoly to the South Seas you don't have to understand this nobody understand this okay in the share market also nobody understand this like a company get contract on something like you don't understand a contract but you know the story this company get contract worth this much wow everybody go and chase like this one, la. nobody understand what it means. I only understand it's a trade monopoly. So nobody understand, but it's a cool story, right? It sounds complicated. Therefore, it must be sophisticated and high class. So I must make profit from it. Yeah, this is like normal people's thinking. So due to previous experience of the uh, um, East India Company, the public believe that this trade and the monopoly will bring in immense riches. Hence, the stock is regarded with favor. Even though the director of the company are inexperienced in the South American trade. It's like I asked a 15 years uh, a 15 year old to come and teach you investing. Uh, if it's Warren Buffett, then he's qualified. You know, Warren Buffett started teaching very early, you know. Uh, <laughs> what am I trying to prove? Okay, anyway, what do they do? What do this company do? Well, they are involved in a lot of things, but amongst those things are slave trading, you know. African slave, they do this horrible thing of um, slave thing. La, like they bring slave from one place and then they bring to another place to sell like an item. But even with a monopoly of this market, you know, the UK give them this monopoly. Even this also, this company cannot make a profit. The mortality rate was just too high. Okay? So, but even though they cannot make a profit, how do they sh manage to make a, this share price go up? They use marketing. Even though they were not good at running their business, business deteriorates year on year, the stock price kept getting up. How? This is because they are very good at making fake impression that they are successful. They fool the less educated, like all the MLM out there lah. Right, all the MLM out there, they drive sports car, uh, Mercedes, this thing, Forex thing. No, I'm not saying all Forex is what. I'm an investor, of course I know Forex thing. But it's not get rich quick, okay? If, it's, if there's anything that will get rich quick, I'm already very, very rich, okay? And so far, I still cannot find anything that can promise you get rich quick, okay? Anything that promises you get rich quick, just like, Say no lah, come on. This is you. How 
How old are you? You just listen to them and immediately you know whether it makes sense or not. Especially after you study my stuff. But how do they market their stuff? By making fake impression that they are successful. Premium office, prime location, sports car, all this thing. Just like this. Meanwhile, in France, the Mississippi Company. Ooh, Mississippi. A company formed by an exiled Englishman named John Law. This man is special. His company's mission is to replace metal as money with paper currency. You know, back then, they haven't invented paper yet, you know. No, not paper. Paper currency, like your one ringgit, two ringgit that is worthless nowadays. They haven't invented that. Last time, we are still using gold coin, silver coin, but your gold is still worth that much. Not like the ringgit now, okay. And to replace it with paper money. Uh, this guy is the one that come up with this bright idea. So this company soon became one of the largest capital enterprise ever existed. Because the idea is so new and sexy. The story I told you is a story. It attracted a lot of speculators. A story. It's all about the story, okay? The price of Mississippi stock rose 24 from 100 to 2,000 pounds in two years. 24 in two years. So imagine you invest 50k. Two years later, you become millionaire. It's that much you know even though there's no logical reason to justify it this company not making much money in fact the prices rose so much the word millionaire was invented at this time Uh, the millionaire word that everybody like to talk about invented about this story hey my course teach you a lot about history right you don't get this thing from anywhere else you become very knowledgeable so a super bubble has begun at one time, the inflated market value of the stock of this company in France was more than 80 times the value of all gold and silver in the country. And France was a rich country back then. They are so rich and the stock market value is still... This company alone, the value is more than 80 times the value of all gold and s- silver in the country. So imagine how inflated, how big is this bubble man how does this relate to the south sea company i'm taking you round and round and where's isaac newton in this story right (laughs) we're about to come to a beautiful conclusion okay the english were thinking okay because in france wow you have a stock this successful right how can this be and we have this south sea company yeah we have to use the marketing but it's still not that successful. So we were thinking, hey, we can't let all the money go to France, right? Everybody throw their money to France, this company, because they have a sexy idea. We, we have to have a Mississippi company of our own. Hey, hold on a second. You might think the way I say this thing, like I try to say they are dumb or what, right? But if I tell you the truth, the, from what I observe, right? I think this is how most decisions in the top level are being made. They are really like this, you know, the way they make decisions. Hey, we can't let all the, this money go to France. Let's have a Mississippi company of our own. This is the way they make decisions. I've come to being convinced this is the way most big top management make decisions. Mm, I don't know, man. This is like somehow they managed to stay up there. And they turn to the South Sea Company as the answer. So, this South Sea company, this stock, we have to beat that stock, okay? Through a series of marketing. Hey, there we come up with a new marketing. Like, you know, like Subway. Hey, let's sell them this sandwich with full of cheese and meat and say it's healthy. <laughs> Something like that. So, suddenly, hey, cotton trade with Spain. We have a cotton trade with Spain, Spain okay? We're going to be successful. So this is a marketing we gonna the Spain people have all the gold in the world to change with our cotton. You know, UK produce cotton. The Spain don't have cotton, but they have a lot of gold. We just take their gold, they take our, our cotton. We're gonna be so rich. So the public love this idea, you know. Hey, that sounds like a cool idea. Let's go and chase. Thus, it drove up the stock price from 130 to 300. Wait, wait a minute. They can't afford this, like my pot, uh, like my costler. They can't afford this. What to do? Somebody came up with this bright idea because the stock rose to 300 pounds a day. Last time, 300 pounds were a lot. 
So somebody came up with this bright idea. Hey, the stock price is not so affordable. Let's make an installment plan for it as if you're buying a property. With just a down payment of £60 and the rest in eight payments, the public borrowed to buy the £300 stock. Now, when you have easy access, when you have easy payment, easy financing and all this easy money to be like spent out there, naturally, there'll be a lot of spending. So a lot of spending means a lot of people want this stock. They, are, they can afford it now, right? So the stock is so in demand now. Policy makers, the House of Lords, it's like our Sultan, something like that. Like, I know. Hold on a second. House of Lords and House of Common Member is like Devon Rakyat, Devon Negra. Fought over them, you know. They want to buy this share, you know. They fight over the opportunity to buy this share. Imagine that. I want that to ho- happen to my cause, you know. Hey, fight before you come to my cause. You have to fight to get an entrance to my cause. So to s- satisfy the demand, the company isu- issued more stocks to rip off these stupid fools. Yeah? This time at 400 pound each okay because the prices were increasingly rapidly increasing rapidly yeah, very fast from 130 to 300 wow and then 300 to 400 wow everybody this caught made everybody's attention so recently i've invested in this company called uh, x okay this company x i cannot reveal much detail you know invested in company x at a very early stage, before the thing came off, you know, as successful investor, we have to invest early. Then, because I have a prediction that Ringgit will drop and then this company can benefit from it and make a lot of money. Okay, it's called VS. Okay. So we invested in this company. Like way before people chase it, like before it's like four Ringgit. Okay. And I made some profit and then after that I sold. Okay. But when I sell the share, it's not popu- It's not even popular yet, you know. It's not even featured anywhere. Nobody write about this share. Until everybody start writing about this share. You know what I heard from an industry player? Somebody working in the industry. Very top level, CEO level, you know. He told me, hey, I got news that this company's share is going to go up. I'm like laughing inside. Too late, bro. I'm the one that bought early. I'm the one that has profited from this thing. Okay. Those that come in now are the speculators. Okay. The speculators came to take part of the action too. Now, as clever investors, you don't become this speculator. Don't join when it's like 300 to 400 just because it's the price move. Okay. Unless you are a technical trader with a strict discipline but if you are in this course and you're a beginner forget what i said just follow what i teach you okay within a month okay the price went to 550 even people that bought a 400 it still went up so everybody think they're genius lah. hey man i can make money out of thin air i'm a wizard okay at this price it again became more difficult to afford right 550 who can afford so they are losing they are loosening up the installment plan Hey, it's like more difficult for people to afford like how? Hey, mate, let's make it easier for them. So this time, you only have to pay $55 and you only pay one year later. So, hey, isn't, it, isn't this like the property? <coughs> property market in Malaysia? You pay 10% down payment or you don't pay any down payment at all. And then you only pay, <coughs> okay, few months or few years later. In the meantime, Try to make the price higher and sell it to other, and then you get free money. You know this is like what we call like flip properties. This is the concept, lah. You think this all thing are new, ah? Stock chasing, ah, property flipping? No, it's been around for few hundred years. Come on, intelligent investors. We study the history. We won't be fooled, okay? So after attending this course, I expect you not to get burned in the share market. This is what this chapter should at least do. This is like definitely worth the price of the course. Okay. So the price immediately shot to 800 because it's easier to afford now, right? Shot to 800. You know, even the king joined in the action. Imagine the prime minister, the sultan, the agong joined in stock market. This is how crazy it went at that time. The price 
later rose to one thousand dollar. Of course, the king joined. You know, recently there's this company called Red Tone. Red Tone. You know why everybody is buying this company? This Red Tone. They don't even know what it does. I don't think they know. The only reason they buy because Sultan is buying. Sultan Johor. So speculation, uh, speculation frenzy was in full force here. Eventually, the madness was so great, even the South Sea Company cannot handle the demand for new investments. Everyone was looking for the next South Sea Company. Soon, new investments emerged to satisfy this need. The projects are absurd. They're stupid and nonsensical, but they promise hope of immense gain. The story, the story is all that matters. Okay, example of how crazy is the story. Collect a. <coughs> Imagine, huh? hey, I'm gonna start a company. You know what this company gonna do? It's gonna be the next big thing. You're gonna be so rich. This is gonna be like the next South Seas bubble. You know, not South Sea, but South Sea Company. You're gonna be making so much money, you know. And how breakthrough is this? We're gonna collect sunlight from crops, from vegetable. So at night, we have light. Just take out vegetable. And this is how crazy it sounds. People were over optimistic, okay? It seems like they would buy anything. Anything. Anything that promises to make money, they'll buy. A company for carrying on an undertaking of great advantage, but nobody understands what it is. This is basically the share. Of course, not everybody there is a fool. There were some sensible investors, people with logic thinking, people who knows what's going on. They know that these investments are stupid, definitely will fail on, but they bought into the concept of the greater fool. What is this greater fool story? Well, the greater fool theory says, okay, you buy something, you know it's going to be messed up, but you still buy because you believe other people will be more stupid to buy at a higher price. And hence, you make money. You buy and then you sell to those stupid idiots and then you make money. Don't care whether you fail or what. La. It's an MLM. You think everybody's so stupid to join the MLM? They don't. They think if they can join in early, be the first, they say, Tao Ya Tam Tong. Why I know this? My mother was in this MLM thing and you can't convince them out of it. All you can do is prepare a bunch of cash to bail them out when they mess up. So this is what I've been doing. Even if I'm a speaker, I, I still don't find my ability able to convince her. Maybe because I'm her son. So all I can do, set aside a bunch of cash when she's in trouble, take it. Take it. I've already prepared. I've seen this coming. Okay. So anyway, the bigger fool theory. Now, everybody is like this, you know. They're doing something dumb. At the same time, they're hoping someone else is dumber. The greater fool theory. Eventually, like all bubble, when it is inflated enough, all you need is just a little prick and it will burst. This prick came in the form of the selling by the directors of the South Sea Company itself. They realized that the price has become totally unrelated to the prospect of the company. Hence, better take profit now, thinking kicked in. And they started to sell discreetly. The news leak, of course. Oh my God, the directors are selling? You mean the owners of the companies are selling? And panic spread, okay, across the stockholder. Everybody rushed to sell. Burst, the bubble burst. People started selling in panic. Those who borrowed money to invest so even faster and more desperately. Of course, of course. So this is how it looks like. The price came down in a flash. Look, go up in a flash, come out in a flash. This is 100 years after our tulip story in a different place. Huh? Government tried to interfere to stop the crash, but the effort was futile. No use. Huh? Big losers in the South Sea bubble included 
You guessed it right. Isaac Newton. One of the victims. Isaac Newton invested early. He's smart. He's smart enough to look at this because he's like super smart. Exited. Make money happy. But he didn't know this story. Now, I believe if Isaac Newton lived in my era, he can be successful because he will, know, he will have all this story as example, right? But this story is he invests a little bit. He make money happy. Tell his friend. His friend join. His friend get rich. He's like, what? You guys get rich because of me and I didn't make any money? I'm going to join. Re-enter with a lot of money. Then, boom, the bubble crash, okay? He exit broke. He was broke at the end of his life. And hence, the popular quote came up. I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. Isaac Newton. Well, that's it. Okay, that's for giving me so much headache in my engineering course. <laughs> well, at the same time, the stock price of the Mississippi company fell miserably too. You know, remember the uh, Mississippi company, the one that proposed to turn coin into uh, paper? The public realized that paper currency created no real wealth. Of course, all you do is just change your coin into paper. You are not making anything or what? You only created inflation. So other investments fell in price as well. And the public came to their senses. And that is the story of the second market crash of the modern world. Hold on a second. Now you'll be thinking, well, people used to be stupid, right? And uneducated. That's why they can't see the madness they are in. Really? Let's have a the latest bubble, okay? The most close to earth bubble, okay? U.S. housing bubble. So what is this U.S. housing bubble about? You probably, you probably heard this you probably live through this okay the Beijing Huan Ning Ni Beijing Olympic this happened during that time la. so what about this story well as Malaysians I think you will be able to relate to this story as always bubble starts with a bright idea in this case it came from the mortgage banks you know bank new system of banking well we all know one of the major way Banks make money is by lending out money, okay, and then generating interest at a profit. Whose money are they lending out? Your money that you put in the fixed deposit, okay? They used to practice this policy la, la, in US. The create and hold policy. They create this loan and then they hold it as investment. <coughs> Therefore, they were very careful about who to lend money to and needed down payment sometimes up to 30% and many supporting documents like right now they are so careful because of this bubble right in Malaysia it's getting very tough to get loans nowadays but one day somebody came up with this bright idea hey it's always start with bright idea right a story hey instead of keeping this risk to ourselves what say you we transfer this risk to others making mortgage loans and then sell them to the investment bankers. To the investor? Like, hey, I got an idea. Let's screw the investors up. Investment bankers would then sell them to investors. So it's like the top management, they complot. Hey, these people, got, these investors got all this money and these people need all this money. Let's match them up together and make a profit. And don't care like, whether it works or not. Even if it doesn't work, the investors are screwed. Hey, guess what? They are rich. So what? Right? So this is the idea. So this is how it looks like. Home buyers, if you want to buy a house, okay, the house will become your asset. Of course, you buy a house, it's your asset. And this is how loan work like just in case you are super young and you don't understand. Let me explain to you. And if you want to buy this house, most people take out a loan. And this loan is called mortgage loan. And of course, you borrow money, you have to pay interest. And this house will become the collateral for this loan. This is like a contract, you know. You cannot pay this house, it's ours. With the bank, 
Okay, so this mortgage is now a liability to the home buyer. That means it's like something they will eat his money, and an asset of the bank, right? Because I give you this money, this thing will become money and more. I give you one million, I'll get one million and more back, right? The bank, of course. Of if you have, why not they keep the money, right? So the house is tied to the mortgage loan and interest and blah, blah, blah. this is how the old system work. Okay, then suddenly. This mortgage bank got this bright idea. Hey, let's sell this mortgage loan to the investment bankers. And the investment bankers will sell this, package these loans first, okay? We cannot just say this is like normal house loan. We have to make a story, okay? Package them into derivative and sell them to the investors. In the form of derivatives, okay? So now their job is not about making loan and keeping them and taking loan from them. Their job is making the loan Throw to the investors. So this system is dangerous. Think about it. What is dangerous about this system? For me, the moment I look at this, common sense tells me this is disaster in the making. Okay. Why? Because since now, the risk of default doesn't affect the mortgage bankers anymore. They're none of its business anymore. Of course, they will chin chai loan to people, right? They started to loosen their lending standards. After all, the investment banks re repackage these mortgage loans and market them to investors as top grade investments. Hey, why? Because I'm OSK, ma. I'm CIMB, ma. They are not, la, not this just example. I'm CMB, ma. I'm big. Eh, don't worry. We make this thing. You trust me. I'm authority. We are certified. Okay? Just buy. No problem, man. Hence, the housing loans were easily available for everyone and anyone. What I want you to know is this. I have no res not no respect. Lah. You have to know this thing. Lah. I don't have re I don't really have a lot of credential. And in fact, I I think I have the least credential of all. I'm a mechanical engineer. Okay. And no background in finance. But what I can do is I make real money in the share market. That's like what other proof do you need? I can make money, I can teach people, it makes sense to you, it makes sense to me. People have real real people have made money, have testimonials, my real students are making money. This is the real thing that you should look for if you want to sign up for other courses. Uh. Don't look for those like certificate, those things. Those are not what matters, I tell you. Tony Robbins, a very famous motivation speaker. No credential. All he does, ability to teach and inspire and transform people. A very famous internet marketer, Peng Jun. No credential. I, I'm not saying that he's not qualified, but no credential, right? He's good at what he's, he does. Automatically, everybody buy. And he's really good, right? And other people. So, don't be under this credential thing. Anybody with credential authority, you just listen blindly. Don't do this thing. You are smarter than that. Okay? That's what I want you to know. Even the banks or what they they don't most people don't know what they're doing. Okay. Trust people that do the real thing and do the real result. Don't trust the credential guys. Okay. Even doctors sometimes they give you very uh at one time the banks doesn't even require any deposits and will lend to people with no job, no income, and no asset because it's none of their business. You default, you don't pay the loan, none of my business, the investors lose money, right? Money for housing was freely available. So if it's, just like I tell you this thing, right? Hey, you should make note. Just like I told you, when there's a lot of free money out there in the market, what happens? People buy stuff, right? There's a lot of consumption. And when it's easily available to everyone, more demand, la, more consumption, more demand. Write it down. This is, this, okay, the demand supply thing, write down. This easy, uh, when there's more money, write it down. This is how the market works. This is how prices move a lot. Most of the time, these are the major thing that determine uh, prices movement, okay? I tell you, this chapter, most courses don't have this chapter. You go out, you go any investing program, they won't teach you this uh, chapter. Maybe they know, maybe they don't know, I don't know. But this is called market cycle and how the market money moves in the market. This, nobody, I, I'm proud to, this is one thing I'm proud of. I'm able to make complicated stuff simple. If you want to learn on your own, it's very complicated, it's very high finance stuff. People, high finance stuff explain to you, you don't really understand. 
I package it into such a beautiful story, you write it down. Okay? This lesson. So what follows next? When demand is more than the supply, prices soar. And when something increases in price rapidly, it will attract a lot of speculators and traders. Property flippers. Of course, why? Prices go up, right? Like just now, people already sell, you come in, all these people, flip property, want to get rich quick. Much like wolves to the smell of blood, a disaster is in the making. Like Malaysia, you know, 2008 until now, everybody flip, 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 flip. Now, 2016. You see what happened to the housing market? Stagnant. Price not moving anywhere. You want to sell, nobody buy. Soon, uh, I don't think the price will fall very much. Lah. But, of course, this is a downtime for the market now. Those that try to flip, they are burned. Anyway, prices soared and soared. Making money was so easy. House prices seem to continue to increase and increase. It looks like a non-risk investment. Like, no-brainer lah. Anybody can make money. Everybody's a property expert now. Almost anybody can make money flipping properties. Prices shot to the roof. Look at the prices. Home price index is the average prices. La. So you look at the price. from 1990, uh, At the end there, la, shot like so much, right? Like almost two times, right? And the population didn't increase much. So what happened? Why suddenly it go up? You want to study whether there's a bubble, you usually look, look at this uh, graph like we compare. Whether the factors that should govern the price uh, or whether the price is illogical. So this is illogical. Uh. You're going to learn those things in the future. Of course, like every bubble, when it gets to the height of insanity, the bubble bursts. How? Reality? Remember those bad loans made earlier? No jobs, no income, no asset. Well, it doesn't take a genius to guess that they will soon default on their loans. Hence, their homes are auctioned. This sends the market price of the houses down. Chain reaction. As investors are always very reactive, this news sends a panic shock to the speculators, the house flippers, many whom over leveraged. They borrowed so much, okay, to make maximum money. They even started selling in panic, panic selling. The final blow came from the home buyers themselves. Why? Because they took the loan for the house at a high price. You know, we bought the house. The price is already very high, you know, that time. And they buy it. But they buy to stay. But the house prices dropped so much below what they are paying. And they thought, hey, if this mortgage, if I stop paying this house, right, they will take back this house. But I'm paying more than what this house is worth. Hmm. Should I just let this mortgage fail? Why am I still paying so much for the house that is worth so little now, right? So one by one, they just decide not to pay their loan and give the home back to the banks. So now you have a crash. 50% decline in value. Imagine uh, if you borrow money, right? Imagine if you have borrowed money. Those are not your money and it declined 50%. You borrowed 10 million in the hope you can make another 10 million. You lost 5 million that you don't have. Bankruptcy, la, suicide, la, all these things happen during this time. Wow, that's bad news for the flippers, right? Many of them must have gone bankrupt. Well, that's not the end of the story, man. Remember the investors earlier? Well, who are the investors? Since the homeowners are not paying the mortgage, okay, the derivative that these investors hold now basically become worthless. The loan that you have, boom, they are not paying. You can't get your money back. It's just a piece of paper now. Huge losses. All your money, hilang. Don't buy this thing, lah, investors. Invest in stocks. Wow. Worse still, these investors invested using borrowed and highly leveraged money. Um, investors, well... Investors are rich, right? They can afford to lose. Uh, they'll be all right. So who are the investors? Okay, the investors in this derivative are major financial institutions. Banks, investment funds. These losses are so big. Banks. We are talking about banks, you know. Banks started to fail. One by one. Bank. Fail. Bank go bankrupt. Okay. And because these are banks... Okay, I repeat, banks, banks are failing, imagine that, okay? 
this send a chain reaction across the whole financial industry. This is why they say this is one of the worst, worst financial crisis in the world. And now the effect is still there. Now it's like they are still trying to hold on to this thing, you know, so that it don't become worse. But it's still very tough to hold on to this thing, you know. They're not safe yet. The disaster is just being like contained. People panic. Stock market crash. Government tried to step in. So what is the after effect? Well, lending institutions now, oh, we were so stupid. We were so loose on our lending standard. Now we become careful. It becomes even more tough to lend money. Hence, it's getting difficult to borrow money, to spend or run business. Yeah, if we don't borrow you, if we won't line up money, right? If you want to buy an iPhone on installment, no thanks. Nobody going to lend you the money. You can't buy the iPhone. If you can't buy the iPhone, what happens to Apple? Less money, right? Less money, what happens to um, uh, Apple? When they have less money, they start cutting jobs. Unemployment increase. Unemployment increase and uh, inc uh, become worse. And business also cannot lend money to expand. Business becomes slow. Consumer, due to lack of money and being cautious because of the economy crash, I have to be careful, sp save some money, reduce spending. Less spending leads to less capital, resulted in less profit for business. One by one, business started to fail. Business fail, unemployment increase. Unemployment increase, less spending. This is a vicious cycle. Yeah, it's like a cycle, continue on and on. And this is called a recession. And when this recession get even more tough, it's called a depression, a more severe case of recession. This issue is still ongoing in the US. But do you notice the story about the housing market earlier resembles what is happening in Malaysia now? People buy properties not to stay but to flip for a quick profit. They drove up the prices so high that Real property buyers cannot afford them. Yeah, you and me, it's tough to buy them. Malaysia, will the bubble bleed out? That means slowly die out or burst, like suddenly drop. Now, this is a Malaysian house price index that, that I get from uh, Trading Economics. It's legit. Measures the percentage of increase annually. Prices haven't dropped yet, but they are slowing down. Look at the price increase in percentage, slowing down. Measures are in place to stop it from further growing la. so bubbles what have you learned what have you learned from all these stories do you notice the similarities phase one the bright idea they always start with a bright new idea a new investment a story in the tulip case it is the new investment in the form of rare tulip in the soft sea it's new shares of a new trading company in the housing crisis it is this new operating standard, this derivative. Isn't this similar to most scams out there? Your friend invite you to the coffee shop and tell you there's a new investment, revolutionary, 100% sure be, maximum profit, right? When these ventures start to look profitable, gamblers, speculators, Russian, when people started to make a little bit of money, everybody Russian. That's driving up prices even more. And when people start making money, word spread. Those that joined early in th those new investments seemed like they made some money and it became very tempting to invest in, especially if you're less educated. This mass public joined in. People from all walks of life are involved in this investment. People think they can lose their job. No need to work, it's so easy to make money. Quick their job. Everybody think they're getting rich, already plan how to spend their money. Um, okay, my mother was involved in, in this MLM thing, right? And I... You know, I'm not famous that time. So I joined. Nobody know who I was. I didn't join as in put money there. I joined their uh, gathering and listened to what they have to say. I'm like spy there, you know. Pretend to be dumb. Know what they were doing? They have imaginary profit. Like share market paper profit. They invest some money and then their superior, their supervisor tell them, Hey, you made like one million today. Who so happy. Uh, sell their house. Mortgage a house, buy more. And you know what they tell me? They're planning to spend those money to buy like a big house, a mansion. They're already spending the money in their head. Really terrible when they burst. 
a lot of people were really terrible. Some people gone crazy. Like one of my mom's friend got crazy, you know, like she lost her mind. And you would think the people involved are like stupid people, like less educated people, but no, like a very successful business woman that I know in my town joined this as well. Doctors also joined this as well. Oh, no IC, man. So this is just an illusion, okay? It seems like they're making a lot of money. Much like most scams out there. They tell you you're making a huge profit, but you can't take the profit yet. Phase four, leverage. Since they are making money, they start borrowing money. Collateralize or sell their homes. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Make maximum profit. This situation happened in all cases of the bubbles. La. When things become hot, the wiser ones will advise that this is not sustainable. Like me, la, I advise my mom this is not sustainable. Denial. When others point out the facts to why this new investment will fail, they got decent. I got decent by those that have already invested. Hey, as investor, you will have this problem also. This is a very real problem. Nobody can escape this. Even I have this problem. If I bought a stock, I'll tend to look at the beautiful side only. You tell me anything, it's hard for me to conceive in, hard to get into my head. This is called confirmation bias. And all this thing, all this psychology thing, human behavior, all this thing, we're going to cover in the live event. Excited? <laughs> so the investors are in denial mode. They see the facts, but they find the reasons that justify their mistake. Hey, it's not bubble. Look, they are like public listed. My mom told me it's public listed. I'm like <laughs> a legitimate investor. I know what is public listed, what is not. And that is not public listed. <laughs> and they try to justify all they can. It's really like, it's as if they got, how do I say, possessed or something. You, you, you don't know what's going on. But of course, after the bubble burst, they say, hey, you're right, and they come for help, and after that, they listen to you. But don't guarantee them from falling to another trap again. As of all bubbles, eventually, someone started taking profit. Same case happened with the MLM case. Some people try to take money out. It's a money game, right? It's when somebody take money out, or the, usually it's a top guy, huh? take money out or disappear, like Zhang Jin, disappear. That's what happens. Huh? When signs of the investment starting to fail, people started to panic. This made the investment fail even faster. People started putting blames. Hey, in stock market or um, housing market, still okay, you know. You panic, you sell, you can get your money back. MLM, no, not even the cent. Borrowed money is the most common reason smart guy go broke. Warren Buffett said this, not me. It's not like you shouldn't borrow money to invest. Kun Yu Yin, the founder of IJM, he made a lot of millions using borrowed money or else he wouldn't be so fast he made a lot of million using borrowed money but he's capable he's good and he's could you in <laughs> right but we are we are us if you're a you have less than five years experience try to borrow money to invest you're just waiting for trouble to happen eh? even though those stories are in the past and in different places these lessons are timeless regardless of place or time human nature don't change eh? Even though technology you have, but human nature don't change. It's in our genetic. Why is it important to learn how to um, this bubble work? Okay. Number one, it is to be able to avoid being a victim. Number two, there's a huge amount of money to be made if you could make use of it. You know, people are gonna chase this thing. Eh, let them chase and buy when they sell in panic, because this is also how the market works. There's a few key concepts that I need you to rem remember from this chapter. Number one, market works in cycle. Market tend to end higher than they started, but market works in cycle. They go up very fast and they go down very fast in like big fluctuation. If you can see here, the straight line, okay? The straight line going up, inclining up is the value of the company. And those fluctuating line, the bigger fluctuating line is the general trend of price and the smaller fluctuation is the real trend of the price. Okay, price movement is governed by supply and demand. We already know that. When there's more supply than demand, prices go down. More demand than supply, prices go out. Supply demand of um, stocks are affected mainly by human perception. What they think it is worth. 
not what it is really worth. In the long run, it is worth what it is really worth. But in the short run, it is all those people's emotion. Is we're gonna get rich quick, we're gonna get broke quick, sell desperately, buy desperately. Those things are the thing that con those, those things are the thing that control the market prices in the short term. And also of course availability of credit, as in how easy can you get money to invest? But that's more advanced thing. How fast can they change? How fast can human perception change? Like just now, directors sell, everybody panic sell, right? How fast can they change? In an instant. Price can change in an instant. This is point number five. Okay? So don't be surprised if you buy a stock today, tomorrow it goes down 10%, 5%. Price change in an instant and it, it has got it can be like nothing to do with the real value of the company. When people are optimistic and greedy, prices go up. When people are fearful, prices go down. How do we make use of this situation? Be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are fearful. 当别人贪婪,我恐惧。当别人恐惧,我贪婪. Mandarin verse for this. Lah. I learned this from a movie. Summary. Buy low, sell high. Yeah, simple. But if you look at this thing, this is how the investor cycle goes. Lah. At first, you're optimistic. Then you get excited. Then you get true. Wow, I feel great about this investment. Then euphoria. Hey, I'm making so much money. I'm like the best guy in the world. That's a point of maximum risk. And then when the price started to drop, anxiety, you get anxious. Why price started to drop? Then denial. Hey, this is true, man. You kind of gum up back. Temporarily set back. I'm a long-term investor. Fear going to happen next. Then desperation. Hey, I just sell. Like, no hope. But like, panic. Oh, then capitalization. Maybe share market is not for me. Like. And then despondency. I don't know what this means. <laughs> Then depression, and then after that, the whole thing start again. I start to have hope, relief, optimism. If you look at this thing, it also work like a relationship, right? <laughs> anyway, Weiji. Chinese word called crisis. Okay, Weiji means crisis. Now, Chinese, they have a rich culture, actually. I'm not saying this because I'm Chinese, because the word is really good. Now, this word Weiji comes from Wei comes from Wei Xian, a time of danger. Okay. Ji comes from Ji Hui, opportunity, a time of opportunity. What this means is this in danger, there's opportunity. Critical moment. Okay. And that's it. And that summarizes this course. I hope you learned a lot and you really enjoy this session as much as I enjoy making it for you. And I'll see you in the next chapter. Hope you learned a lot. Bye bye.